Undead Viking, and this is Airships of Oberon. Airships of Oberon is a game for three to six players uh, that has each person in charge of a clan of airship uh, pilots, if you will, uh, that are racing against each other in the attempt to be the first person to collect uh, a certain number of artifacts, which then will allow them uh, to kind of become this 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 master of the air uh, that will then allow them to go ahead and collect these three mystical keys, which will then allow them to unlock uh, this, this special codex, which will allow them to be the winner. This is a race game, and in a lot of ways, in my opinion, it, it it kind of reminds me of games I played when I was younger. Uh, for whatever reason, it, it reminds me a little bit of Talisman uh, because it, there's some roll and move aspects going on. There's a lot of uh, player uh, conflict. And it also reminds me a little bit of a game called Shadow Lord uh, that I used to play with my buddies when I was in high school. If you know the game, uh, well, you know it. If you don't, you don't. But I'm just going to leave that out there and you can just roll that around your head. But regardless, um, and both those games are games I really enjoyed. And so I really enjoyed uh, Airships of Oberon as well. Now, it, like I said, it's a bit of a throwback because it is using like roll and move. And a lot of people poo poo that nowadays. They're like, oh my gosh. You know, but for this game, it's perfect. It actually makes the game uh, filled with the, the right amount of chaos and randomness that the dice bring. Uh, that that allow you to kind of like everybody being uh, focused on the game and watching the, the turns evolve. So uh, let me show you how the game is played. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you exactly why my game group and I have been really having a lot of fun with this. All right, cool. This is Airships of Oberon, as you probably have guessed. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how the game is played. Uh, I have set it up for six players, which I think this game handles six players very well. It handles uh, a number of players, three, four, five, or six. I haven't played with four, uh, but I have played with three, five, and six, and I had a lot of fun in all cases. All right, so this is the island that you are going to be traveling around trying to collect these artifacts that are on these little hexagons here. Uh, your goal in the game is to complete uh, missions that will allow you to get experience points which will eventually get you to 36 experience points which you track all the way around the board once you have 36 experience points and you get your final quest which is to collect these three keys you'll go ahead and collect them and then you'll race to get into the middle of the board by unlocking those three locks and then you win the game by getting the codex that's located in the middle now along the way uh, everybody's going to be kind of squabbling over uh, these artifacts or in these spots because you're going to have quests that are going to require those uh, and um, you know and you're going to be stealing them from people and pushing people around and so on and so forth uh, which you know makes the game a challenge obviously because if all it was was just run around collect stuff and turn it in uh, the game would be pretty easy but regardless uh, the game begins by each person getting a player board I'm going to show you a big stack of these before I kind of show you everything else um, each person gets a player board that represents their airship clan um, this clockwork effect here, those are the same for everybody. Um, you might notice, though, that, like, down here, um, with, like, the energy effects, these are different, you know, Vindico or Rapidus, Medico, and so forth. Um, the Captivo and Rebella, these are all things I'm going to explain here in just a little bit, but, you know, so the ocular effects and energy effects, you'll notice... Those are different, um, you know, but like th these here, the Captivo and Rapello and the Clockwork effects are going to be the same regardless of the clan that you pick. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this guy back here. This is my daughter's favorite one to play because you get a bumblebee for your airship. I think that's kind of cool anyway. But regardless, um, each person is going to get um, these mission cards. You'll notice that they have the backs of the airship for your clan on each one. Uh, each mission will tell you to do something where this one says explore the mines of the jade mountain to find a pure quartz crystal that can amplify your telegraph signal what yeah that's a cool little uh text or what have you but ultimately what it means is is you're supposed to collect this artifact that artifact and the question mark means you can collect any artifact and so like here's the the cup here's uh the the gem and then there's the mountain and so what you're going to do is you're going to collect three artifacts and then you're going to make it over to you're trying i and you 
trying to anyway. Hopefully you're going to make it to the mountain. You'll turn those in, the artifacts will go back to their locations on the board, and then you'll gain the experience points reward that's located right there. You also notice there's an experience points reward for the artifacts. You get that when you claim the artifact, and then you get to keep the experience points if you can complete the mission. But if somebody steals the artifact from you, you lose that experience points. So um, that's you know something that you have to keep in mind. Now each person has six of these missions, and one of the missions will be this final mission and if you get the three key mission to get to the uh, the in, go to the codex in the middle if you get that one then what you're gonna end up doing is you're going to have to uh, uh, like put that at the bottom of your deck which is located on your uh, your player board and then so it just stays underneath and then you can wait you know and then get to it at a later time so you know just so you don't like lose it but once you complete a mission it's done you throw it in the box and uh, you don't have to worry about having to do that one again all right so i'm just going to kind of show you a quick really this uh, one that my daughter likes to play so you can see there's the the, the rune of numa is is the uh uh the, the clan here but uh, the clockwork effects and also these down here you'll notice they have these little either they have this little blue disc on there or you can see they have like this little green triangle some of them have more blue discs on there those are represented by these little blue discs over here as you use these you use them up you'll place a blue disc over there to show that you've used that power now you'll notice that there is also like a little one there so when you use the power you're going to get one experience for doing those things now the powers are just things that that, you know, just like say, instead of uh, moving under turn, uh, move another player up to a full movement roll. A uh, player cannot use any clockwork effects on that player's next turn. So there's different powers and different things that you can do that are either going to help or inhibit uh, the other, help yourself or inhibit the other players as they're trying to complete their quest. So you turn your first quest over and you see we have to claim um, the fire and the leaf and it says obtain the navigator sextant which can be used to make map calculations at the star observatory. So not only do we have to get those two artifacts, we have to go to the Star Observatory. So you kind of look around the board and you locate that observatory, which I'm doing right now as I'm talking, which is right there. And then you locate the two artifacts that you need. And so like the flame is here and the leaf is there. And so now that's your goal. That's, that's what you're going to be doing. And you're going to move on your turn by rolling two dice. You're going to get a movement total. So in this case, you get 10 movement points, which is obviously very good. And each little spot on this little uh, board, including the ones with names and the artifacts and the, the, the little port, uh, the ports for the airships and what have you, are all one. So one, dun, dun, dun. so if you're moving, you're just going, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you can you can collect artifacts that your mission is telling you. Only those. You can't just collect any artifact you want. Um, you collect those by being on the spot, stopping there, and, and just collecting the artifact. Now there is ways for players to put blockades on those and 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 put and things to, that that'll impede you. But is, if there isn't anything like that um, to stop you, then you'll be able to go ahead and claim those artifacts. Now people can steal those, which I'll explain in just a little bit. But just keep that in mind. Now that's just moving, and there's little train tracks. So you're traveling by train when you when you uh, when you roll the dice move. Now the other thing that you can do is you can, if you're on the spot, then you can see these little blue circles there. That's called an airship port. You can, if you're on one of those spots, including these three in the middle, you then can travel for one movement point to any named location on the board and for one movement point. Now that can be very helpful if it can get you close to um, a location that uh, has the artifact you need, or if you have the artifacts and you, you you can use it then to move directly to the spot that you 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 turn in the mission. So on your turn, if you had ten movement, what you could do is like starting here. So we're gonna take an airship. We want to go ahead and get that that leaf. So we go, you know, over we go one, and maybe land on them the grass village. That's one movement. Two, three, four. Collect it, and we go ahead and put it right there. That's five. We have to get over to the flame, and so we go uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so then we're getting close, and then hopefully eventually we'll be able to get there on our next turn and go about it, and that would be your turn to do that. Now the thing is, is that we've kind of put ourselves in a situation where we're close to another player. So when that person goes, if they happen to need uh, either of those artifacts, that's when they're able to then go ahead and possibly steal those if they can land on if they move onto the same spot as our character and they can use, I'll just move this so you can see it, 
there are the ray gun effects are Captivo and Rapello. And what it is, is you try to take them, and remember, you can only steal artifacts that you need. So, like, you know, this is uh, the new Morocco group. So let's just go ahead and pull up the new Morocco group real quick here. So let's say the new Morocco group had this quest in front of them. So they had to collect the leaf and the cup, and they saw I was right next to them, and they were like, wait a minute, yeah, I want that leaf. Now, obviously, these missions are face-up for everybody, so you might not have done that and moved right next to the other player because of the fact that they'd be able to move on to you and try to steal it. But to take it, what happens is, is that one person rolls two dice, gets a total. The other person that's defending rolls two dice and gets a total. And then you see, if you win, you get to steal that artifact and then place it on your card. And But here's the thing. If you win and you steal the artifact, you don't just sit right next to them so then that player's next turn, they get to steal it back. You automatically get to move six spaces uh, on the board to kind of escape and get away. If you lose, the you attack somebody trying to steal their artifact and they, they win the roll, they get to move you uh, six spaces away from them so they can also, you know, next turn move farther away from you uh, and, and hopefully you aren't able to catch up with them and steal the artifact that you have. Now, uh, there are ways, um, you know, player abilities that are on the board, uh, the, the boards that you have, that are going to allow you to uh, affect uh, different types of... Uh, uh, like your, th those die rolls. If you have, um, if you have a captured artifact, you can uh, tap it once, you know, to l allow you to re-roll any dice roll, and you just put a blue token on there. If you use it, it doesn't mean the artifact's used up or anything like that. Uh, you just remove, also remove then the the token that's on it uh, when you complete the quest, or it gets stolen from you. So that's another thing. You also notice that you can use an ability to like just push another player away from you. So like if if I was in that situation where I saw that they might be coming after you, you can use the same effect to just push one, push somebody away from you as well. So then they, you, don't, you don't have to worry about them coming up and stealing those from you. Um, you know, and so there's other cool abilities as well. The Obstructio and Armorum are the ones that you put a flu token on an artifact, then you have to roll seven or more to capture it, so that's something you can use to slow down. And also you can put a blue token on any empty space, and players have to roll seven or more to get it. Now, here's the trick. Once you get to 36 uh, experience points, you don't have to, you know, and you're you're there, meaning that the, it can't be stolen away. You don't have artifacts that can be stolen away from you that, that are going to cause your experience points to lower. You then are in a situation where you're going to be collecting these keys and collecting all three keys. Other people that are at 36 experience points can use the same ability to steal those keys from you. When they steal the keys, they don't steal one key, they'll steal all of the keys um, from you. And this game does a really, really good job of everybody kind of staying at the right, right around the same level, if you will. And at the very end, there is a bit of a, well, a mad, mad rush to the middle. And a lot of finagling and a lot of uh, you know tense, ang anxious moments as people are, are fighting over those keys, trying desperately uh, to get into the middle and, and win. Now, uh, this is, as I said, it's a race game. Um, it, it is a bit of a throwback game, in my opinion, as I said in the, in the, in the introduction. But let me talk about all of that uh, in my uh, final thoughts, which I'll do right now. I'm going to say this. Uh, the designer uh, of, of Airships of Run is a genius for one reason. Um, he made it so I can't do my box look. This is it. He sent me a box cover. That's it. That's all I have. So I, I can do this, I guess. Woo! But, like, I tried flipping it up in the air, and it just doesn't work as well because, you know, it, the air can't... Well, wait a minute. That would work. Ha! I win anyway. Oh, anyway. So, regardless. So, Airships will run. I, I've... I've, I've, I've kind of beat to death the whole thing that it's like a, a bit of a throwback game and, and you're just going to take my word for it. If, if you if you played games, like board games, like you know 20 years ago, 30 years ago, like I did, then you, you might have an idea of, of why I say that. But regardless, what I like about this game is uh, is everything that, that comes with having a, a, a roll and move aspect to a game. Um, there is chaos, there is randomness, there is uh, uh, people uh, running into each other and button heads and fighting over stuff and squabbling over things. Uh, but also there is like that because of that, you know, this isn't a garden game and I, I'm not going to go too into that, but it, this isn't something where you just kind of rest on your laurels and just not really pay attention to the board as everybody else does their thing. Uh, this is a game where you are engaged with everybody else at the table 
and um, you're watching uh, the rolls. Because even if you're not involved in the conflict between two people, it's fun to watch two people roll dice against each other. It just is. Um, when you're playing with six players, the game is fan fantastic uh the, everybody seems to have an artifact that you need or if you have the artifacts that you need you have them because and somebody else needs them and they are gunning for you they are chasing you down and you are like frantically racing uh to go turn in your quest before those are stolen from you and those like and what happens then is that you have really really neat moments uh between two players is like somebody needs to get like a nine or better on two dice and you're just everybody's zero zeroed in and watching that die roll and and like and you watch the the dice tumble down and then you see what you get at that point and so th those are things that are that are really cool now there are as i said abilities that each clan has that can mitigate some of those dice rolls and things like that and th you do need a little bit of that you know you know, just to make sure that um you, the players don't feel like they're just completely uh at the whim uh, of of luck and luck only and there are some very you know neat moments and neat decisions that you get to make as far as the pathing that you do and also um whether or not because you, you can abandon quests as well and which which kind of like uh, slows you down a little bit because you have to take that quest and you got to tuck it behind and more or less likely you've probably already tucked behind your uh, your your key quest and so then it's going to take longer to get there and that that's experience that you're kind of giving up on and things like that so there are some cool moments and cool decisions to make as well as well as you know that whole conflict thing that i really enjoy so so there you go i really and i honestly do think this is a game that is kind of perfect um for uh uh like if you have like a, a gamer friend or a, a gamer uh family member um that like maybe has gotten out of the hobby and they played the game you know games like this 10 20 years ago or whatever um and you wanted to like kind of share uh the hobby with them that you that you're that you're into um this would definitely be a game that like i could see bringing them back into the fold you know just because it would it would be like a a good reminiscing game if you will and for that matter it's a really good in my opinion gateway game as well it kind of opens up you know it takes you know mechanisms that people are going to be readily uh understanding uh, of you know as far as you know collection and i mean and i like pick up deliver pick up and deliver games but you know just things where you go places and get things you know and and rolling dice to get there um you know that's something that people can grasp and understand pretty quickly and then of course you can um you know pull out twilight struggle or something <laughs> make them play but no no but seriously uh airs of world run it's it's a lot of fun uh my daughter loves it my wife loves it uh, my gaming group and i we had a blast of of cursing each other and shaking our fists so um i strongly suggest you check this one out if you have any questions about the game please ask away i'll try to help you out as much as i can with those questions um as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and until next time you have yourself one heck of an awesome day okay okay